Hey friends, welcome back to a brand new video. In 2019, I went to my local auto show to try to interrogate the Subaru booth about the next-gen STI. And of course, they told me absolutely nothing. So I took my search online to try to find a clue of what the STI might look like and what kind of power plant would be placed inside of it. There was this article from Forbes that actually mentioned the FA24 and how it was rumored to make 400 horsepower in the new STI. What a complete fluke, or is it? Today, we're going to be talking about the FA24 DIT and how it might be Subaru's best engine platform for more power. The VB Series WRX has been out for some time now, and we're finally starting to see the potential that this car has, and more specifically, how much power it can actually make. And I've got to say, the numbers are absolutely impressive. The FA24 debuted in 2018 in the Subaru Ascent, where it pushed 260 horsepower and 277 foot-pounds of torque. This is actually more torque but less power than the WRX, where the WRX is rated for 271 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque. And between 2018 to 2022, I'm sure Subaru was ironing out any issues before implementing it in the WRX. A naturally aspirated version of the FA24 was dropped in the new BRZ and GR86, pushing 228 horsepower and 184 foot-pounds of torque, which is fairly healthy considering the weight of those cars. The FA24 is a derivative of the FA20, continuing on with the twin scroll turbocharged setup, which means no rumble due to the equal length headers. The EJ257 out of the STI comes with unequal length headers and a single scroll turbocharged setup, producing the rumble sound we know and love. The twin scroll turbo is more efficient than the single scroll because it divides the exhaust gas pulses from the exhaust manifold into two ports, which creates smoother flow from the exhaust into the turbo. This in turn increases the pulse energy sent to the exhaust turbine, meaning more power. Something else related to the turbo is that the FA24 comes with an electronic wastegate actuator and bypass valve, which is actually a pretty big deal. Typical pneumatic valves require pressure differential from closing of the throttle against boost pressure to engage the valve, whereas an electronically controlled one has much more tuning calibration options in the aftermarket. The block is an open deck design, meaning that there are spaces between the cylinder walls and the block casing. A key difference to note in terms of internals is that the connecting rods and cylinder walls are more thicker apparently compared to what's provided in the FA20. This provides more rigidity and strength to the engine. To increase the displacement to 2.4 liters, Subaru bored out the FA20 from 86 millimeters to 94 millimeters. Having a larger engine improves overall engine response. Who said there's no replacement for displacement? Having this larger engine plus the twin scroll turbo gives you the best of both worlds. The compression ratio of the FA24 DIT is fairly high at 10 to 6 to 1, which is unchanged from the FA20. Having higher compression allows the engine to extract more energy from the combustion processes due to better thermal efficiency. The difference between the FA24 DIT and the FA20 DIT is that the FA24 makes similar horsepower with less boost at 12 psi, whereas the FA20 requires up to 21 psi. Having lower boost from the factory gives the FA24 a higher ceiling when it comes to increasing boost pressure, therefore higher power numbers to be achieved. The STI's EJ257's compression ratio is much lower at 8 to 0 to 1, with a boost pressure at 14.5 psi, meaning that it has much less thermal efficiency compared to the FA20 and FA24. In terms of fueling, direct injection has transferred over from the FA20, providing the FA24 with precise fuel injection timing. One of the main benefits of direct injection is the cooler air-to-gas mixture entering the combustion chamber, which offers better performance and efficiency. The only downside is due to the high-pressure stream of fuel, overspray lands on the intake valves and ports, causing carbon buildup. Walnut blasting can be done at most European shops, so this is a minor maintenance item to keep in check. The last thing I want to mention about this engine is that I love how Subaru changed the turbo inlet from a flimsy silicone material to a metal one. This is a common modification I've seen to previous gen WRXs and STIs. If I could describe this engine in one word, it would be efficient. Subaru has optimized the combustion engine processes to produce one efficient beast of an engine. With that out of the way, let's look at the different power levels this engine is making with respect to different mods. Now, I know every tune and every dyno has a lot of factors that play into the power outputs, but I think it's still fairly useful to see the type of power level increases we should see based on different modification levels. So I wanted to categorize the power levels creatively, but I really couldn't help myself. In typical Subaru fashion, let's start off with Stage 0. Flat iron tuning reflashed a completely stock 2022 WRX and it made 260 wheel horsepower on 91 octane with no mods, just a reflash. 
This is absolutely nuts. Compared to the EJ257, you would need a full turbo back just to get those numbers safely. I'm really excited for this FA24. Let's keep going. Stage one, just an intake. So I found this fella named Trenton on YouTube and he owns a 2022 WRX and he got it pro-tuned with just an intake and it made 295 wheel horsepower and 315 wheel torque on a dyno jet. I have a friend who owns a 2014 STI and it has a full turbo back and injectors. And on a dyno jet on 93 octane, it made 300 wheel horsepower and 305 wheel torque. So Trenton here paid a fraction of the cost and makes similar power. The FA24 DIT is something else. Stage two, intake and turbo back. Prime motoring made 368 wheel horsepower and 343 wheel torque with just an intake and turbo back exhaust. Now, I don't even wanna list the amount of mods that you need for EJ257 to make that type of power, but I can tell you it's a big hole in your bank account or through your engine block. I'm getting more and more hyped up as I look at these results. It's absolutely insane. I'm suddenly, I don't, I don't really mind the plastic cladding anymore at this point. Stage three plus the final stage. Now to get to this level, you need to have a full turbo back exhaust, an intake, a front mount intercooler, an upgraded clutch and flex fuel to take an E50 blend of corn juice ethanol. Now, Prime Motoring tuned this 2022 WRX with those exact mods and made, so I wanna get this right, 470 wheel horsepower and 469 wheel torque. That is absolutely insane. I know that's aggressive, but to see a 200 wheel horsepower and 200 wheel torque jump from stock is ridiculous on a stock Subaru WRX long block. Now, the STI might have been killed off in production by Subaru, but I think this new generation WRX is the STI killer on the street. In conclusion, the FA24 DIT makes way more horsepower with less mods compared to the FA20 DIT and the EJ257 out of the STI. Taking into account that it was first placed in the Subaru Ascend, which is rated to tow up to 5,000 pounds, this engine should be able to withstand extra power demand, and it does. This goes to show that efficiency is great for us car enthusiasts because an efficient engine doesn't only get good gas mileage, but it responds to modifications and tuning extremely well. In my opinion, this engine should be every Subaru fanboy's dream, where we no longer have to modify an engine for its lack of efficiency and hope we make power, but instead we modify to maximize its efficiency and bring out the power it's waiting to make. Anyways, friends, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I will catch you all on the next video. Oh, and also, please follow me on Instagram at SipMedia. I post car stuff on there as well.